Well, it's a 1929 Mac AK, a dump truck. The difference between a Mac AK and the popular Mac ACs is this was a higher speed, lighter weight version of the AC. It has brakes on all four wheels, driver comforts like rubber blocks underneath the seat, and a cushioned uh, steering wheel uh, for uh, driver comforts. It has a uh, four-cylinder engine with a five-inch bore, six-inch stroke, uh, four-speed transmission, and of course chain drive. Well, the engine was busted. There was actually a hole right in the engine block, and so we had to change the center section, new bearings, turn the pistons out of uh, aluminum billets. The original engine had flat valves. We put tapered valves in it. So the engine had a complete major uh, overhaul. Whatever parts we couldn't buy, we might have made. And then in the end, they balanced the engine, put it on a dyno, and it should make about 77 horsepower at 1,800 RPM. So it's a four-cylinder gas job. It's got an updraft carburetor. Uh, in the front, you see the magneto turning. Magneto creates the spark uh, for the uh, spark plugs to ignite the, the, the gasoline and uh, all self-contained. Uh, Max were different, but they put the radiators in the back by the firewalls and they claimed that the reason the Mac did that was that the radiators were prone to damage by teamsters who were still uh, on the horse and carriage. And they knew if they backed into the radiators with the carriage that they could take the truck out. So Mac moved the, the radiator back to the cowl behind the engine to put it in a safe location. Uh, in the wintertime, it gave the driver heat because there were no heaters in the vehicles at that time. So uh, it served uh, two purposes. Well, the chains were a very simple uh, driveline and a very rugged driveline. You could change the gear ratio on the vehicle by adjusting the drive sprocket. So if they were working in a deep excavation, they could change the drive sprockets and put a much smaller drive sprocket to reduce the gear ratio to give the truck the power to climb up out of those excavations. Of course, on the road, they went very, very slow, but well, they had the power to, to, to come out of the excavation. If you were doing more road work, you could put a larger sprocket on it and increase the road speed. Some of these trucks worked uh, in New York City right up into the 60s carrying uh, newsprint for the newspapers uh, because they were so rugged. This truck has been modified and today it'll do uh, just under 40 miles an hour because we changed the drive sprocket on the chains. But the original drive sprocket's uh, probably uh, somewhere between 25 and 30 miles an hour maximum. power steering it didn't exist at that time and you know just uh, Armstrong steering you know the drivers had to use their head they had to keep the truck in motion if they were steering it but you also got to remember that a lot of the stuff wasn't paved roads it was dirt roads so it's a lot easier to turn that rubber on a dirt road than it is uh, on a uh, on a paved asphalt or concrete road actually there are actually doors they were very rarely used they were, they didn't work freely but there are doors on the truck during the winter time they would have side curtains that they would roll down uh, uh, so that you could hold the heat in the cab. What's unusual is that in this typically you have a clutch and a transmission and then a drive shaft to your rear ends to, to distribute the power to the road. In this particular truck you have an engine, a clutch, and then your drive shaft and then your transmission behind your drive shaft. So the, trans the placement of the transmission and the drive shaft are reversed in this truck as opposed to what we're typically accustomed to seeing. They ran what was called a 40 by 8 
and it was a little bit narrower tire and it was on a uh, tube type tire but the rims uh, on this truck were so badly damaged uh, for over the years and rusted that we felt they were dangerous and so we put more modern tires on it. Well we built the entire box and we, we drilled and bolted it together with uh, nuts and bolts uh, and reached the point where we we're ready for the rivets. We were excited about uh, riveting the, the truck together so we built the forge and bought the hammers and the tools to do the rivets and uh, found out that the rivets are an acquired talent. Uh, it takes a lot of practice to do a proper rivet. The uh, dump body on this truck, the hydraulic pump, is mounted on the pistons and it has a long drive shaft that goes back to the transmission and the power takeoff. The drive shaft turns the pump and the pump creates the pressure to raise the dump body. First, the truck was originally uh, purchased by a fellow named Joe Girardi in New Rochelle, New York, and the truck originally came from the uh, White Plains Mac branch there. It was a terribly abused truck, and we brought it down in 2002. It was a, over a 10-year uh, restoration. Well, my father was in the transportation business in the 40s and 50s. He was one of the largest, but as a young boy, I was fascinated with trucks, and I started in the uh, dump truck business, eventually wound up in the material sales business and uh, road base uh, rock crushing and, and supplying road base material to highway projects. So it's, it's been all self-taught how to restore the trucks and it's part of what we do. It's registered in the state of Florida as an antique vehicle and uh, occasionally we, uh, we take it for a nice ride, uh, five or ten miles and uh, when the weather is not too hot and uh, yeah we enjoy going for a ride with it. Got it on there, driver? Yeah, go ahead. Well, judging by the name on the side of your door right there, it sounds like you might have something to do with the other D. Baradinas. Come on. Yeah, this is my father's 1948. It's uh, the Vintage Trucks of Florida. It's a local antique truck club. Uh, they put on a few shows a year. There's usually a monthly meeting, but this is uh, the annual truck show. And again, it's at the Flint in Eastburg, Florida. 10-4. It looks like it's getting transported in style. Tell me about what you're running with there. This is a 2006 Peter Milk 379 extended hood. It's got an 18-speed 550 cat, diesel free harness, and 355 rear. 10 4. You don't just go around hauling antique trucks now, do you? No, sir. I'm in the heavy haul business. I transport new and rental equipment for the dealers and rental houses uh, all over the state of Florida. If you don't mind, I'm going to tag along with you. And we can't pass up a large car going down the road doing its business there, right? Absolutely. Let's ride home.
if you get hooked up to a large move or something like that, you make sure to give me a holler. I'll come back out and do a proper interview. We'll catch up in the near future on that. What are some of the things you'd have to look out for in order to make sure you have a successful move? Oh, you got to watch for everybody around you trying to follow you and take pictures of you going down the road. You always got to watch out for recaps or debris in the road. You don't want to pick something up and throw it up into the truck. You got to be alert make sure you got a clear road ahead of you. You need to avoid the potholes. You know, you want to you keep the truck on them as smooth as ride as you can. 10 4. Is there a, a preference on why you guys backed it on versus driving it on? Yeah, if you notice that the Love Boy does not have wheel covers on it. I transport mostly heavy equipment, bulldozers, scrapers, graders, and I I got to keep the overall height of my load down as low as possible so I do not run wheel covers for what I do. We need to back the truck on because if the tires pick up stones, it'll throw them through the window, windshield of the truck, so we back it on just in case. 10-4. How much does the, the vintage Mac weigh? Uh, we had it on the scale. It's around 19,000, 19,500, depending on fuel. Wouldn't expect it out of a little single axle truck, but uh, it's a tank. So we built the bed out of all 3 inch steel and quarter inch. It's got four inch T-channel cross members, about 12, 12 inches on center. So we built her just the way we got her. We put her back, and uh, if she had to go to work tomorrow, she'd have no problem doing the job. You guys did a fabulous job. Jojo's got a 1969 Mack tractor, and uh, he's hauling a 1953 Mack B61. I believe at one point you said uh, this truck that Joe's running, uh, it runs every day or runs all the time? Yeah, that, that truck runs every day hauling raw materials into our ready mix plant. Uh, they make about 18 loads a day hauling sand, screening, and rock into our plant. Purebred Mac, Mac motor, Mac trans, Mac rear end. It's got a, a 300 Mac in it, five speed with a dead stick. It's got a 40,000 pound rear. For those that may not know what a dead stick is, can you elaborate on that for me? Uh, dead stick is a uh, transmission but instead of it being an auxiliary it just gives you an extra low low in first and reverse it doesn't give you an overdrive it'll pull a house down but it won't get out of its own way you have a safe trip the rest of the way up there uh, and uh, i'll be looking to hook up with you in the future and see if we can't get you hauling a heavy load down the road there come on and four driver we appreciate it and uh, you're welcome to follow us any day